when you embark on the spiritual path, when you get under the guidance of a true master, or when you choose a religious life, it is always connected with some do's and don'ts, with some regulations and guidelines. When people, and especially old acquaintances, hear about the choice I made in my life and what that choice brings along, what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do, they think that I have lost a lot of freedom. And they wonder, why would somebody do something like that? In this video, I will explain which restrictions my spiritual path brings and why those restrictions are actually the basis for true freedom. Freedom is very precious. Freedom has many different layers. Freedom of thought, freedom of speech, freedom of action and many more. I would say to be able to express your opinion freely in this world is one of the most precious things. And we shouldn't take that for granted. Just think back about 80 years in Europe. You were not allowed to just express what you think. And even today, we can see that there is some censoring going on about what people think and what they would like to express. My spiritual master always says, you only know what you have once you lose it. I think all of us have somehow experienced something like that in the last few months or years with different lockdowns, restrictions, intrusion in privacy, etc. It wasn't really a pleasant time and many felt that our basic freedoms are at stake and also went out to demonstrate. But what is actually real freedom and can it ever be taken away from us? Is a freedom which can be taken away from us real freedom or is it just an illusion? of freedom. When I was about to move to the ashram here in Germany, I was afraid of losing a lot of freedom. I generally love my freedom. I lived a very careless life, I traveled around the world, had no compromises, no restrictions, was just able to do whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. So when I was 26, Life brought me at the feet of my spiritual master, Paramahamsa Vishwananda. And finally, my long search has come to an end. Because finally, I found what I was really looking for. Anybody who knows about the importance of the Satguru on the spiritual path knows that that was the most important moment of my life. Or even lives. My soul was rejoicing and overjoyed, but my mind and ego was actually getting very, very scared. What will I lose? Following a spiritual master is connected with so many do's and don'ts. It is connected with certain restrictions, rules, regulations, obedience. Living in a community means that life doesn't turn anymore just around myself but I have to start to make compromises with other people. It is like in a relationship or in a family. The more people are there, the more you have to consider each another. And obviously, if you live in a community where many people live, you have to start to consider all of them. On top of that is the life with the spiritual master. Being under the guidance of a true master means that you can't fool yourself anymore. You can't tell yourself the lies as you did before because he will point them out. He will show you where your shortcomings are so that you can actually advance. So altogether, I was a little bit worried if I should make that big step. One fine night, I got the opportunity to speak with my master. It was a beautiful spring night and we were sitting outside in the bench of the ashram here in Germany. And he was asking me what is troubling me. So I told him that I have an issue 
with freedom or better I'm afraid of losing my freedom. So he asked me what does freedom mean for me and I delivered straight away the whole list. Freedom for me means if I can come when I want and leave when I want. Freedom for me means if I can do whatever I want. Freedom for me means if I have enough means. Freedom for me means that I don't need the permission for anything from anybody. Freedom for me means if I can do this, if I can do that. And the list was going on. I guess everybody has their list of what freedom means for you. So while I was telling him what freedom means for me, he was quietly sitting there and patiently listening to all the points I listed. After I have finished, he just looked at me with some wonder and said, hmm, very interesting. Very interesting how you humans see freedom. A freedom with so many conditions, with so many ifs, a limited freedom. Very interesting. In that moment, I was at once defeated because I knew exactly what he was speaking about. Because true freedom is something which is not conditioned. It is not limited. Otherwise, it is not freedom. A freedom which somebody can take away from you is not true freedom, isn't it? After that instance, I find the final courage to make this step and since then have dedicated my life to the spiritual path, to the service of God and my spiritual master. And I can just say the last 14 years were the best years of my life. And yes, it is true that I don't eat meat, fish and eggs. And yes, it is true that I don't drink alcohol, take drugs or consume other narcotics. And it is also true that I made a vow of celibacy and therefore do not engage in the sexual sense pleasures. Yes, it is true that I try to avoid the association of people who are only interested in the above mentioned points. And yes, it is true that I have a daily routine which is filled with prayers, rituals, meditations, selfless service, chanting and contemplation. All of those things which I have adopted on my spiritual path might seem strange to somebody who lives a normal mundane life. But where those rules, regulations and this lifestyle imposed on me or did I choose it? Obviously, I chose it out of my free will. The ego, the mind and the senses, they were obviously not always happy about my choice. And now I can actually see very clear that our so-called freedom is actually the reason for our greatest enslavement. Being slave of our instincts, our thoughts, our emotions, our senses, our desires, our mind and our ego. Every freedom which can be taken away is not true freedom. External things are limited and therefore also the freedom they can provide are limited and can easily be removed. But if you find this inner freedom free from attachment, desires, wrong identification, then you have attained true freedom or moksha. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita in chapter 5 verse 3, whoever is free from the pairs of opposites is easily liberated from bondage or arjuna. To go from a limited freedom which is actually enslaving you to the ultimate freedom, you will have to restrict certain things. Without that restriction, you will not attain ultimate freedom. It is like when you take a bird out of a cage. The moment you take the bird in the cage, that bird will feel deprived from his freedom. But that is a necessary step so that you can take him out from the cage and make him fly in the white sky. 
The same if you want to take a fish out from a pond and bring him to the ocean. You will first have to fish him in a net and put him in a little glass bowl. The moment he is in a net and the moment you put him in the bowl, he will feel deprived from his freedom. But again, that is a necessary and temporary limitation which is imposed on the fish so that he can be brought to the endless ocean to restrict yourself to some extent to get your thoughts, your mind, your senses, your emotions more and more under control to adapt certain practices, to avoid certain things is a necessary step so that you can attain this absolute freedom. Where are you creating your own prison? Are you freely indulging in all kinds of sense pleasures? Are you being lazy? Do you take drugs? Are you addicted to something? Are you narrow-minded? Are you worried about life and the future? Are you scared about what could happen to you and to your dear ones? Where are you creating your own prison? And how can you break free? I invite you, take actions, make steps, even if they are small steps, but make steps. Don't get the idea that just letting yourself go and live the crazy life is that which will give you true fulfillment. Don't take the freedom and the good things in your life for granted. See them as a gift which help you to actually achieve a higher freedom. God has given you an intellect, has given you the power to control yourself, to control your thoughts, your emotions, your senses, to direct them to something positive, to direct them towards God. So by contemplating on God, by chanting his name, by disciplining yourself, by disciplining your senses and your mind, you become the master of yourself and you can decide in which direction you want to go. Then you will become truly free, not enslaved by the society, not enslaved by your family, by your partner, by your children, not enslaved by yourself. But you will get in touch more and more with yourself and with the will of God. If you're interested in how you can change your life, feel free to join Bhakti Marga. Seek the advice and guidance of my spiritual master. Grow also into your true potential and into this eternal love relationship with yourself and with God. Everybody has their individual path. Everybody has their individual steps to make. But it is important that you make steps. You can be free. That's the beauty of the human incarnation. We all can attain the ultimate freedom. So let's take this chance and make the best out of our life. Jai Gurudev.